Good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another presentation uh, brought to you by connectvk.com.au. Today we're going to make some uh, coaxial cables, or should I call it my patch leads, or patch lead. Um, I'm using um, RG58 coax cable made by Benelec and uh, one end is going to be terminated with the male SMA connector and the opposite end uh, with the classic uh, UHF male PL259 um, as you can see there I've used the um, uh, coax stripping tool a brilliant little thing to uh, quickly get the cable stripped exactly um, to what it's required without wasting too much time about measuring it and uh, getting it right so if you want to get it right the first time get one of them they're five six bucks and they are um, really good yeah um, I'm doing the SMA mail end uh, right now and um, um, I'm not sure if you can see the here again it's zoomed in a bit but it was a bit hard to <laughs> to plug in that um, a little pin onto the um, center conductor there because it's so small and I've got a camera in front of me and I'm like a meter and a half away and I'm blind yeah anyway um, all right so once the center conductor is uh, slipped on um, grab your uh, crimping tool and uh, give it a good hard squeeze and you'll be you'll be set with that part now with the braid, uh, pull it back just a little bit, uh, looks like a bit of a flower there, um, and, um, and slide in the, um, the SMA connector on top of it. Now don't forget to put that metal bit, the little barrel, um, on the cable before doing all of this, um, as well as the uh, uh, heat shrink if you're planning to use one. I like using heat shrink. It makes a makes a job um, looking ten times better. Uh, very ni very neat. All right, again um, a good hard squeeze, um, and that's it. One end done. Um, I think this so far um, this bit has probably taken me about I don't know forty five seconds to a minute. So um, the the whole cable can be done in about I don't know two and a half three minutes. Um, with a bit of prep um, and obviously using the right tools I was using I was, before I got this little cable stripper you can see there now um, I was doing it by hand and um, yeah, it's always uh, um, you know tricky to uh, um, well not tricky but you know it requires some time to measure it up and cut it and then peel the um, the outside jacket there and, and, and get it right but this way as you can see yeah piece of cake really really nice all right same thing don't forget to slide in the little, little metal barrel um, I already put on the uh, heat shrink on the other side so that shouldn't be an issue um, and spread off that um, um, what's it called the, the thread well now it's not a thread it's the um Ah, doesn't matter. It'll come back to me, and um, and put it back, and you're ready to rock. How easy was that? There you go. Very neat. And at the end, just slide back the uh, heat shrink tubing and um, heat it up, and uh, we're good to go. Well, we've got one more step. We've got to we've got to solder that center pin on the PL two five nine end. All right, so um, let's get that um, heat shrink done and completed, so we can move on to the next part. That heat ring, I have to admit, makes that cable look million dollars. Uh, really nice and uh, neat job at the end. Professional. 
<laughs> and uh, a f- bit of a free advertising there for Makita Heat Gun. got um, our two ends um, done and heat shrink completed. We just got to solder that center pin and cut off that excess wire there from the center conductor, conductor and uh, we're good to go. Um, one ready to use patch lead. I think I've cut off about a meter and a half there. So yeah. And these things are really handy. Um, I think they call them a third hand. So uh, when you've got to solder something and uh, you need an extra hand, then you, uh, you use them. And when soldering, um, I'm not saying that you know this is right or wrong, but this is how I do it. Uh, make sure that you heat up the, uh, the uh, center conductor first before applying solder because uh, you want that solder to flow. You don't want to have, uh, uh, what are they called? The, the cold joints or something like that. Um, and I like to keep that solder there till the solder starts to bubble, bubble up, which uh, gives me an indication that it's uh, in, a, in a good liquid form and it's flowing and fills up that cavity uh, completely. Well, there you go, the last step, just a uh, uh, continuity test with a good old multimeter. Um, just check the outside to outside and the center pin to center pin. And if you got the beep, then you're good to go. And obviously, if uh, if you uh, need an extra hand and you find it difficult to, uh, to test them, use the alligator clips uh, like shown there. All right, so that will be it um, for today. And I'll uh, let you listen to this really groovy music for another 10 seconds. Anyway, take care, guys. And uh, until the next time, 73s.